works together for our good, God. And we say thank you. We thank you for breath, God. We thank you for life. But most of all, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for being saved. Hallelujah. Through it all, God. Hallelujah. We're saved today because of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that you brought me in. We glad that you lifted us up. We glad that you chose us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After you called us, you chose us, God. And we are be, be grateful for it, God. We won't take it for granted. We are treated special. We are treated, God, in the way that you have given it to us. You gave us favor, God. And we just want to return it back to you in praise, in worship. We want to turn it, return it back to you in full commitment. God. Hallelujah. We're committed to this thing, God. Hallelujah. We're committed to standing. We're committed to walking upright. We're committed to doing your will, your way. We're committed to stand. Hallelujah. We're committed to be overcomers, God. Hallelujah. Because you called us to it. You chose us. Hallelujah. You could have chose somebody else, God. You could have chose somebody else, hallelujah, but you saw fit to choose us. So you have high expectations of us, hallelujah. And we know through all things, you can carry us. You, but through you, we can make it. Through you, we can be an overcomer. Through you, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our lives are here to give you the glory. Hallelujah. We come here with purpose. We come here with purpose, God. Our reason for being, God, is to please you. Our reason for being is to give you the glory, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Search us, Lord. Search us, Lord. If if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out, God, yes, because we don't want no hindrance. No we don't hindrance. want nothing to block your work. Nothing. We don't want nothing take to hinder out, what you want to do, God. We Not came with an expectation. An We're expecting, hallelujah. We're expecting yes, you to we work. We're expecting yes, you to Lord. perform miracles. Yes, We're we are. You to save, we're expecting yes, we deliverance, we're expecting we're higher expected. heights and deeper depths. Lord, we're here with an expectation. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. And as the service go forth, God, in word or deed, God, we are asking you, hallelujah, to anoint the speakers, anoint the vessels, hallelujah, that they can hear you. Hallelujah, that they yield to you, God, so that you will be able to give us in every and any and everything that have you have way. for us in Jesus' name, Jesus. amen and amen, amen Jesus. and amen. Have your way, yes, speak to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this yeah. will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the readers of his word because his word is already blessed. Praise God. We getting ready to turn the service over to the heads of our teacher. We want to say amen as she comes. Evangelist Zena Owens, say amen as she comes. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. God is a good God. So that 
call and response song. One person says, God is a good God. And then the, the response should be what? Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is because we are witnesses that he is good. Thank you, Pastor. And his mercy endured forever. You know, that's a statement that's repeated often in the Bible. There's a certain Psalms where they're repeating for his mercy, for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. And guess what? They won battles repeating that. Amen. There are times when people don't like to hear repetition, you know, and I have to admit that's one of my, I won't even say it a flaw but it can get on people's nerves. I, I do understand because I do repeat. Maybe it's a habit because I work with preschoolers. Amen. And, and a lot is done through repetition with preschool children. But when I looked in that Psalms where they were, Jehoshaphat was in battle. I think they were repeating right there. Uh-huh. And they won a battle and their swords were clean. There are times we don't have to fight. Because the Lord said the battle is not yours. It's what? Who's the Lord's? So repetition was working very well for me when I read that. That was a positive repetition. So why am I saying that? It's because we, we heard it and we say it often when I was growing up. Psalms 100 was something we always said. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord for, you know, all ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not where I said, how come I can say it like that? Because I came to Sunday school. Ha! Shout out for Sunday school. Why am I saying that? that we said that as, a ch as children. You know, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good, mercy is everlasting, and is true and dear to all generations. Why do we say what we say? Why do we do what we do? Guess what? It works. Teach the children. Teach them. Guess what? They taught us and that is part of walking, part of our makeup. So his mercy endured forever. And Jehoshaphat used that. And they, the, the, see, he lined the singers up. He lined the, the Levites. He got everybody in order. And guess what? They won a battle without picking up a sword. And then after that, they went and picked up the spoils. So they got even the reward from a battle that they didn't have to fight. Amen? So it's good to come to Sunday school. It's good to learn the word of God. And it's good to implement the word of God. And I just repeat it. Let her kill it, but the spirit make it alive. Amen. Our lesson today, and I give honor to God, to our pastor, to elect Lady Perkins, to Evangelist Clark, to um, Minister Troy, to all of the saints of God that will that are in the house on Zoom and those that may come on Facebook. God is good and his mercy endure it forever. We give honor to you today. Our lesson for August the 6th, 2023. Lesson 3.1 says, I will build my church. I wonder who's talking right here. Anybody know who's talking right there? That's Jesus. You know, when you say I, don't think Zena said, I will build my church. I'm reading it. But it's coming from where Jesus spoke. Amen? Amen. And it says, our focus verse is Matthew 16 and 18. Um, chapter 16, verse 18, it says, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Our lesson text is taken from Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. The truth about God, Jesus tells Cause his disciples to follow him. Truth for my life, I will be a disciple of Jesus. So if I don't get any further lessons, you just got the focus verse, the lesson text, the truth about God, and the truth for my life, all in a nutshell. Amen. If you if the if the internet go out, you just got something. If the electric go out, you already got enough. Amen. Amen. But let's go into our teaching um, outline. It says here, I'm going to skip the icebreaker for a minute. Um, 
it says, what are your favorite hobbies outdoor? And it was good. You know why they said that? Because somebody was dealing with an outdoor hobby or uh, in the, or less in their livelihood. So I'm going to ask the icebreaker, what are your favorite hobbies? If anybody want to tell me, you can tell me. Some of that is are in here, I already know it. <laughs> but, but you can tell me if you want to tell me. Or you can tell somebody. You want to tell me, Pastor? Cruising. You know what? We already know. <laughs> For anybody in here, he likes to cruise. Pastor, that's a hint, hint, y'all. He loves to go cruising on a ship. And lady, like Lady P got so many, but I know that's one of hers too. She said she's about ready. Amen. So it says here, um, I have hobbies too, but we'll skip mine. Pastor like to cruise. Okay. It says here, lesson connection. Um, the first section, Jesus went looking for disciples. Under that first section, letter A, Jesus entered Peter's boat and taught the people. Letter B, Jesus launched, Peter launched out into the deep and let down his net. C, the miracle of the fish revealed Jesus' identity. D, I will worship Jesus for who he is. Section two, Jesus came looking for us. A, Jesus came to build his church. B, his church is built upon the revelation of who he is. I love that. I love that. Woo, Lord, help us get to that. C, we are his church. It is not the building, a building. That's the D, I will be a disciple of Jesus. Amen. Internalizing the message, God has tried to speak with you. I'm sorry, that's a question. Has God tried to speak with you? But you responded about another person or situation instead of the condition of your own heart, soul, or spirit. That is a question. Has God tried to speak to you regarding that? That is internalizing the message. So you have the outline just in case you, we go no further. You got enough already. Amen. And in our lesson connection, this was dealing with um, uh, a young uh, person was going fishing. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm not going to read it verbatimly. And he his name was um, Brett, I believe. And he didn't want to, he went fishing with, he wanted to just be with the peers, with the peers here. And then with later on with the peers of his church, he just wanted to go fishing and be a part of, but he didn't want to let them know he was cringing about the lives of the fish. When they caught the fish, it was amazing to catch. It was just so beautiful. The art of the hobby. But when they put the fish in the container, he heard them flip-flopping and just, just, just hanging on for dear life because they were fish out of water. And his heart was hurting for the fish. You know, he couldn't share that. He kind of didn't feel comfortable sharing what he was experiencing on this fishing trip. And later on, when somebody went fishing with some minnows, I believe, they said, put, you know, use it for bait. So that means he, they took some live minnows and they said, put the hook right through the eye. Oh my God, he was having a fit with that. But see, he was with peers. Sometimes you just don't want somebody to know what you are dealing with, what you're going through. You just sit there and go through it by yourself. He just couldn't put the hook through the eye. He didn't want to kill the, the animal. He didn't want to do that. It, it, it was bothering him. But the, the gist of this, God was calling him to a different kind of fishy. And that's what we're going to talk about. Knowing, I love this because when you look, some people say, I'm saved, but I don't know my purpose. I'm saved, but I don't know really what God wants me to do. I'm saved, but I don't know my ministry. I don't know where I fit. This man was on a boat, wanted to fish, but he didn't fit in that manner. Yet he had a heart to fish. So we have to, Find out what does the Lord require about us. We have to sometimes go the extra mile to know ourselves. What is it? What's my shape? There's a shout out to Warren, uh, Rick Warren. He has a book on shape. 
And, and I love it because I deal with a lot of people regarding their purpose. That's my ministry. My personal passion is to help somebody else know their purpose. Once upon a time, I was just say, oh, but when I found my purpose, when you know why God has saved you, not just for you to not go to hell, not just for you to miss hell and go to heaven. Oh, by all means, make it in heaven. But while we occupy to, to until he come, do you know what you're here to occupy and do? Notice the word occupy, uh, 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 occupation has occupy in it. The root word of occupation is occupy. And it's word of God saying occupy till I come. So what are we talking about? You say, but you got something to do. That's where the disciples come in. Because many, many had the benefits of the blessings, you know, the fishes and the loaves. They received the blessings of the Lord when he fed 5,000. Uh-huh, but how many followed him? Uh-huh, how many became disciples? Disciples follow on. Disciples take on the teaching, you see. So it's a little different from just getting a blessing. Uh-huh, we all are blessed. He reigns on the just and the unjust, and we are grateful for his blessings. But let's talk about discipleship. Fishes and loaves, he fed so many, but how many actually followed on? So that's the difference in just the blessings and then becoming a disciple. So when people say, I'm saved, but I don't know what to do. I'm saved, but I don't really know my passion. I, I, I don't know my, my, my calling, my gift, my purpose. One place you can look, first you pray and you ask God. Because the maker of you knows. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and now we are self. I'm in a lesson, by the way. However, look in your passion. Look in the area that you're, where you're passionate about and talk to God about that right there. Because he made us. He knows what's in us. He knows those things that, that that's just we're passionate about. So since he's the manufacturer of us, he put that there for a reason. And guess what? We were made, we were created for his glory. So we need to look and see in that passionate area how that can be used for the kingdom of God. Not for yourself, but for the kingdom. Ah, I believe Evangelist Clark taught last week or preached last week when she thought she was just going to read the morning scripture. She preached for King for Zion's sake. Ah, because it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. It's about God himself. All that he's done to make the way for us to give him glory. It's all about his glory. So for the kingdom's sake, seek ye first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. So I'm in, I'm in the lesson. But look in your passion. That's a, let me just put a pen right there for those who are saved and have no clue about what next to do. Pray, ask God, what does, do you require of me as an individual, as an individual in the kingdom, in the body of Christ? And then check out what you're passionate about and see how can that be used for the kingdom's sake? For the glory of God. We're going to find out that Peter was a fisherman. He was an experienced fisherman. Indeed, he knew how to fish and when they were biting. He knew where to fish. Okay, so we're going to go to our lesson now. Um, Let's see. It says here in the first part, Jesus went looking for disciples. Jesus entered Peter's boat and taught the people. That can be found in the fifth chapter of Luke. Pastor, do you mind um, getting that for me? Please, if anybody want to know. I like pastors reading, okay? <laughs> I like the way my pastor, and if you play, you know how you used to play the uh, Bible drills? He will beat you. Okay, he will beat you fine in the scripture. But it says here, that day Simeon, also called Peter, was fishing on the Sea of Galilee in Luke 5. It presents that to us. Jesus was preaching at the self-same sea to a great crowd. Perhaps due to the large crowd, Jesus asked the fisherman, Peter, Simon Peter, who did not appear to be a part of the large crowd, if he could borrow his boat. 
after Jesus climbed into the fisher fishing boat, Peter pushed the boat out into the sea and became a member of Jesus' crowd. Let's talk about that a little bit because what stood out to me there after Jesus climbed into the fishing boat. See, fortunately, let's let's go, let, let Pastor read what happened. Let's go to that passage right there, not just at the third verse. Let's start from the first verse. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Luke, Luke 5, Luke 5, chapter 1, starting at verse number 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gethsemane and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were going out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when, he, now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, lunch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. That was a lot right there because... actually was on the premises. However, this particular fishing trip was a call. It was a call to discipleship. When you go in the book of John, see that was after Jesus had died and rose again, that would be the send. So let's, that's just a footnote there. You have the call and the send. Call to discipleships after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you find in John, another fishing trip. Now they're sent out. You see, so God is using his passion, his livelihood, even his job <laughs> to be a, 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 that that's productive in the kingdom of God. So here he goes to this man's job. That's his livelihood. He was trying to make some money. He had tall, he and his partners had tall all night and caught nothing. When it looks like, when it looks like it's not working, it could be, check it out with God, that you are actually in the will of God. When it looks like it's not doing what you would desire it to do or look like, you just may be right on time with Jesus because the crowd had pressed him. So a following had gathered right on time. He needed Peter to become disgusted, disfunded, and come on in, bring in the ships. They were washing their nets, plural, plural. They had more than one net. Maybe they were catching some crab and maybe some um, shrimps, you know, different kinds. Of, I don't know if the net had different kind of bait on it to catch certain, attract certain kind, but whatever the case is, he had more than one net. But they were already pulled in and it was washing their nets. These nets were really, really big. They were heavyweight nets. It took time to clean out all of the debris from the sea, or, uh, it, from the net. The nets must be clean for and prepared for the next fishing trip. If you got so much junk in your net, you won't have room for the fish. So because this was his livelihood, he had gave up on that day. He counted that day off to have taken in nothing. Hey, it's a done deal. This day got us nothing. But we're going to clean our nets because we still are hopeful for another day. We're going to clean the nets preparing for tomorrow. But sometimes we, our time is not sometimes, many times, our timing is not God's timing. You're wrapping it up. You're cleaning it up. You're counting it done for the day. When you're right on time for God to step in and say, you're not done. I am going to work out, uh, work a miracle for you. Just as you come to the end of you, cleaning the net, preparing for the next time. 
when God got a blessing this time. Ah, sometimes people can't handle today. You know, when, 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 when the Lord said, it was somebody said, will thou be made whole? And the man was at the pool. He was like, well, I don't have anybody to put me in. He was waiting for the next time. You understand what I'm saying? It's easier, soon and very soon. One day, God's going to work it out. It's easy to keep it in the future. It's easy to talk that future talk. But when the Lord said to somebody, uh, and when he read the book, uh, and he closed the book, and then he said, today, these scriptures are fulfilled in your ears. That was too much for him. Some people can't handle the blessing today. Some people come to the altar, will you like to be healed right now? Will you like to be baptized right now? Will you like to be saved right now? Filled with the Holy Ghost today. Uh-huh. It's easy to put it for the future. Soon and very soon. One day, I'm going to church. One day, when I get some class. One day, when I... Uh, Hmm, get some of these bills paid off. I'll get to church. One day. It's easy to, to say tomorrow. The wine is made a song. Shout out to the wine is tomorrow. But what if tomorrow doesn't come? What happened to today? The day you hear my voice, heart, not your heart. You hear today, Jesus say. But see, they was washing their necks. They wasn't saying I will never go back out. They came in because they counted today, done, zero, didn't get any. So they brought the nets on and watched it. Jesus caught them ending it, ending it all. Ah, but here comes Jesus. After he done taught all of these, I'm ready for you, Peter. After you got so frustrated. Because see, you didn't make no money today, Peter. You said we talked. That means you weren't just sitting eating popcorn. You talked. How many is tired of toiling? That means you worked. You labored and took in nothing. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Somebody is working hard and not satisfied. You know, I see your hand. The woman at the well. Not, that's my other cousin. Jesus met her. He told her about the living water. I can give you water where you'll never thirst again. Give me this water. You know, because I'm tired. Of, I, I want that kind. You know, she had five husbands. And the one she was with wasn't her. Total of six. But here comes the seventh man, seventh man in her life, Jesus. Now you can rest, honey. You ain't got to work. Because all them husbands represented something you were in search for. But now you can rest. Why? I came to give you rest. You've been toiling. You've been working and bringing in nothing. Nothing that satisfies you like Peter. Evangelist Clark. Work it. Say that. Say that. All right. 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 All right. Yes. You've been doing, you've been toiling. Mm -hmm. And see, God's way, God's way. That's right. That's it. Now. Now word.
All right. Now. All right. That's what brought in the fish. Hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was waiting to hear. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, faith. Uh, now, the day you hear my voice, that's now. He, he's a present help. Not now, not now. Hot shot, not now. The greater works, greater works. Hot shaba, shanaba, shando. Now, now. There you go. I was waiting on it. New thing. I'm on my Shonda. Yes. See, he's he's. Uh, thank thank you for that. Thank you for that. Because I know you got some more than that. Because I feel it. But I feel the now. See, God wants a response. Hiya, oh, hiya, I'm on Shonda. You hearing something that will help you? Respond, hallelujah, Shanda. Respond properly, respond appropriately. Guess what? Let me help out my cousin, Peter. He was an experienced mariner. He was a fisherman. He knew his job. And here this man who's preaching that I don't know, but all these people listening to him for some reason, I don't know. See, we don't know stuff, but we won't come find out. Mm -hmm. Here it is. He see what's going on, but he's too busy working. He is a fisherman. He fished before. He know when that he had knowledge. He has skill. But when it comes down to Jesus, Mary, Ah, you put you choose. You need to choose the good thing, the better thing. Martha was serving and serving and serving, but Mary chose the good thing. Put all that down. Jesus has come on the scene. God in the flesh, manifested in the flesh. Do you know who is among you? If you knew, you would stop what you're doing. You stop toiling, and you can ask. Because when you know you're in the presence of God, that's the best time to ask Him what you need. But here, here, Peter was doing just what Evangelist Clark said. He was toiling. He was going on his own knowledge, understanding, and ability. He was doing what he did all the time. But as David said, he served in his generation. Uh-huh. See, we got to understand the time and the season. Jesus was here. Jesus has come to on the on the on the premises. So that shifted everything. We got to recognize when the atmosphere shifts, when the Lord has entered the room. Here he comes. Now, and we're still in the first section. And Jesus, after Jesus climbed into the fishing, the, the fishing boat. See, Jesus had to get in. He had to welcome him in his boat. You can keep toilet or you can welcome me in. 
You can keep on calling or you can take me at my word. Though he had done what he knew to do and his, with his experience and knowledge and ability, he finally came to the place of nevertheless. See, that nevertheless spoke volumes because it cast out you. When he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus said the same thing in the same vein at, in the garden. See, when the flesh, when the carnal is talking, when the carnal is leading, it's doing only what it can do. It's limited and it can be so totally off. It can be all right, but it's in the way of God right now. It could not be so bad because he was using his own wisdom, knowledge, and ability. Once upon a time, it worked. But if it's in a way of God's plan, carnality, the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is in the way of the plan of God. But I'm nice. But I'm trying to do a good thing here. You're in a way. Get your way out the way why you need a nevertheless because that conjunction in the sentence casts out everything before it that's a casting evangelist clark when he said cast your net guess what needed to go out of the boat his own thoughts and ideas too before you cast your net cast you overboard jonah said if you throw me overboard the weather the storm the sea will be calm to you some things need to cast, be cast out of the ship. Why? So that the will of God can be done. So they cast Jonah out and the will of God was into play. So here, before he cast the net, he had to cast his own thought process out. He had to cast his own ability and wisdom and knowledge and his own understanding. Scripture said, lean not to your own understanding. And acknowledge him in all your ways and lean not to your own understanding. And he will what? Direct your path. So he cast out his own ways. And then he cast the net. He launched out. See, what you cast it. If you, if you stay on the shore, you only get trash. If you stay on the shore, you get things of the shore. Uh-huh. I was fishing one time and I had, I was fishing out, I won't tell you where I was, but I was near some rocks. My, I didn't have a weight on my fishing line. So I threw it in the land right there. So I got them little rock crabs that look like spiders <laughs> eating my little fish, fish bait. I had, was fishing with fish. So I had some fish on the hook and I threw it out there, but it landed among the rocks. Uh-huh. So those little rock crabs, a little crab that's no bigger than this, came and ate my fish off, grabbed the fish off. I felt the tug, but when I pulled it up, it was a little crab. And you know, I threw that back in because it looked like a spider. However, when you stay on the shore, you get things of the shore. Uh-huh. But when, but Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down thy nets, plural, for a draw. Why did he say nets? Because he was watching nets. You were using nets originally. Use all you got. Ah, but he only let down a net. So did he follow holy? No. You are only going to receive what you allow yourself to receive from God. The best thing to do is give him all you got. He was washing nets, plural. Jesus said, let down your nets. But he only let down a net. Well, you only get a net's worth of blessings. But thank God you, you know, we're learning. Thank God for grace. So guess what? He still showed Peter who he was. See, I'm, I'm, I'm Jesus. You don't know me, but let me tell you, this is the part I'm not going to fill you in on. I just want to see if you will obey my word. See, the part you don't know is I commanded the fish to be caught. 
Vatamoshanda. I commanded the fish to be in the spot where you will launch. Oh, Moshanda, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize in them in the name of the commission. This was a commission. This was a prerequisite to the commission because he's teaching. Ah, you don't understand the spiritual yet. So let me give it to you with the natural. Since you are fishermen, I'm going to take that and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use that in the kingdom. Find out what you're passionate about. God can use it in the kingdom. Hallelujah. But he didn't got to tell you everything. He's sovereign. He didn't tell you I commanded somebody to be tired and broken and heartbroken and just done. And I told them, stand there. Why? Because I'm sending you there. I commanded them to be caught. I command them to hear the word in that place where I'm sending you. It's a strategic plan of God. I see your hand. I'm letting you know I ain't got to tell you everything. You just got to obey. So if you launch out into the deep, if you let down your nets for a drop, you go bring it in. Shut up, shot. Because I commanded him to be there, to be caught at you, your net. Yes. You hearing something there? Come on now. <laughs> That's it. All right. A net. Give it all you got. Go ahead. Yes. All right. Expectation. Right. Yes. All right. But that's not the right spirit. Okay. Oh, all the next. Yeah, because I'm all in, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. The letter. Amen.
right. 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 <laughs> Heart. Yes. Right. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Please. Please, in my obedience. And see, remember, Peter here didn't know Jesus. So he might have been just being careful. Look, it took me time to clean these nets. But come on, come on. Let's 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 get let's 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 look at Peter's side. These nets are not no nets, just what we may be thinking about. These are some big old heavy nets that you gotta throw in that water and you gotta pull out. You usually it's more than one person that has to pull these nets. So let me just try you. We sing try Jesus. After you tried everything, try Jesus, you know, which is really back to try Jesus first to save yourself a headache. But he didn't know Jesus. So we give people slack when they don't know. We do. But you also, it's not just Jesus. And I'm in the lesson because we've already covered the second section. Um, when you don't know, you know, my people perish for lack of knowledge, okay? You know, <laughs> you don't know, but he's Jesus being kind, giving him a chance to know. So since you're going to put down one net, you're going to, I'm going to bless that that you did. But see, you're going to find out you could have got more. Or those who are looking on can find out. He did that for one net. He could have filled our other nets. See, remember, Jesus is a strategic husband man for the garden. When he, he don't just plant one kernel of corn expecting a kernel of corn. He planted a kernel of corn expecting ears that has many kernels on it. So Peter's lesson was followed to just hear me out. Let me show you this miracle, whether it be a, a, a three net miracle or one net miracle. You're going to see a miracle. But don't forget, they were, there were those that watched as well. And Peter is Peter's lesson. So you can, get, you can get a lesson that will cover two courses or three or one. What you want. You get the one course, <laughs> you do not one net. Whatever the case is, you're not going to be, it's not going to be in vain. Amen? So when he saw, because it wasn't so much about going home, having a fish fry. Ah, I just want you to see what I'm able to do. If I can do one net, I can do three. But it's not even about that. Because see, that's carnal. I need you to come forward because guess what? When Peter saw that and he knew the fish should not have been biting at this time, he knew what he had already done. And when at the word of Jesus, they took in all of that. They took in so much, they had to call partners to come help them bring in that one net. It filled the boat so much that the net began to break. If you compare the two fishing trips, you're finding a, in the in a 21st chapter of John, I believe, that net didn't break. Ah, whole story with that. A revelation God gave me. This net broke. But he had help. You need me. I need you. We're all a part of God's body. Amen? He called partners. When The way Jesus does it, when I bless one, if they hook up with him, They'll be blessed too. Partners. This is a church we're talking about. No man is an island. Come on over here and fellowship with me because God just blessed me with this net of fish. Come help me pull it in. We all go eat tonight. That's the way it's supposed to be in the body of Christ. Amen. 
So they came together and they worked together and pulled it in. This is the church right here. Because the great net has many kind of fish. You can't say, oh, I only want a red snapper, so I'm going to throw back that, that catfish. You threw a net out, so you need to expect all kinds. Amen? When you throw a line of fishing pole, now you may get one at a time. That's still fishing. But you know exactly what you are pulling in. But when you throw a net out, you expect a variety. And you pull it all in. Amen? That's the church. That's the commission that you'll find in Matthew 20, 20, verse 19 and 20. Get ready for many kinds, church. Get ready for all kinds, church. You got a net, not a fishing line. A fishing line is on one-on-one. -on -one. But when you are fishing with a net, you need to get your expectations up to match your nets or nets. Amen? You limit your own self. One by one, one net, two nets, three nets, whatever. It's up to you how much you want to trust and believe God. Amen? So here we have Peter saying, oh, I am an unclean man. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a sinful man. Here he started confessing. I'm just, I'm in the word, I'm in a lesson. Just let me go as the Lord lead me, please. I'm an unclean man. When you have an encounter with God, I'm telling you, I had, and, and let me just, just slow down just one minute. Right there on that bench, I had to do something for the CAF and I had to run some copies off. And back there, there was a copy machine back there. And I had to make some copies and the copy machine had jammed. And then the phone rang back here. So I left the copy machine to come down here to answer the phone. It was the wrong number. Somebody didn't mean to call us. So while I was on my way from there, walking up the side here, I got right here near the piano and I saw a bright light, brighter than the light that was coming through these windows over here. Now I knew that was sunlight. So what is a bright light being over there in the corner by the old man's bathroom? You know, not old man, but our former men's bathroom. There is no window there. What is the light doing over that door? And it was brighter than the sunlight coming through the window. It was, it caught my eye while I was, I was headed back to the back. I slowly turned. I'm telling you of an encounter. I slowly turned to see what is this? And it was right in that corner. On the wall, right over that door, it was so bright. But let me tell you, I immediately got weak in my legs. My, I, it, I didn't make myself, I immediately fell to my knees right there where I turned around to see. It's something about an encounter with God. The flesh cannot stand in the presence of God. I don't care who you are, what title you have. The, when you enter the presence of God, flesh submits. It, got, it don't have no choice. My legs didn't have no more strength. I had to fall to my knees. But when I, I, I knew I was having an encounter with God, Oh, yes, I kind of joy. Testify of his goodness. I'm telling you, I had an encounter. Bonamoshanda. My everything was so just weak. And all I could say is, what am I feeling? I'm trying to evaluate what am I feeling. I felt the heaviness. It was like, sir, like somebody poured some of that. That, that, that real heavy shirt all down on me. And it was love, gratitude, serp of gratitude. 
it was so, if, if, if I could just describe it to you, it went from my head all the way down where I was kneeling on my knees, heavy search, slowly. And it was gratitude. And all I could say is, it's good for me to be here. Hallelujah. That's all I had in my mind. It's good for me. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't make myself be grateful. Gratitude came all over me by itself. Hallelujah, Shonda. And I was so grateful just to be here. I was just running copies off of the CIF. But I had an encounter. It caught on my shot. And it was so heavy. And I was so grateful. I started saying, thank you, Jesus. I couldn't say it fast. I could just say it because the weight of the glory. It, there's a weight to the glory, y'all. The weight of the gratitude feel. I could just say, thank you, Jesus. It was so heavy. So I crawled from there to here. I, I couldn't stand. I had to crawl to the altar. Hallelujah. Shot. And there I began to praise God. Hallelujah. Because I recognized he was present. Hallelujah. Shot. I counted the privilege that he showed up while I was just making copies. Making copies, y'all. He is real. He'll show up when you're making copies, when you're doing some work, when you're just doing what you do. Peter was just doing what he did. And he showed up. He got in his ship. God want to teach out of your folks. You the first student he want to teach. Glory to God. When he get in your boat, he want to teach you. He got in Peter's boat and he was the main student. After Peter realized who he was, he said, I'm a simple man. Just like Isaiah said, when, it, when, the, when Isaiah came in and he said, uh, the, uh, when it, in the year that King Uzziah died, I also, I saw also the Lord. He was high and lifted up in his train filled the temple. When he went through that process, he said, I am a, a simple man. I'm an unclean man. I have an unclean tongue. I'm, a, I'm among people of unclean lips. You start confessing. You start pulling off. You start letting God know I ain't nothing. I am at your service. If you will have me. I am going to shut up. Because I know what I am. And it's nothing in your presence. I'm nothing before you. But I now understand who you are. When you realize who he is. You'll pull it off and you'll say, I'm at your service. I'm at your will, God. Yeah, I'm gonna shout. What will you have me to do? Ah, oh, glory. What will you have me to do? It's just automatic. Flesh got to submit in the presence of God. So I thank God for the encounter. And I'm still in the lesson because you got to have an encounter. The miracle, she says, the miracle of the fish revealed Jesus' identity because Peter didn't know. He might have heard about Jesus. He might have heard it through the tabloids what he was doing. But now he has entered your boat. Oh, my God. And the ultimate part of that particular lesson is follow me. Ah, follow me. That took a whole lot. That was that man's job, y'all. His livelihood, his income. Woo Follow me. Follow me. I didn't see what Jesus put a gun to his head. He said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Why? Because you got another net I'm going to give you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I'm going to give you the key. I'll talk about that later. You're going to get another net. And you're going to take, but this time when I say let down the net, you ain't going to have no problem letting down all your nets. Uh-huh. Because you saw what I'm able to do. Okay, moving forward. Moving along. If anybody want to say something, I, was, I came on to see. Um, now I'm at D. I will worship Jesus for who he is. Ah, that was a little bit of my testimony there. I'm worshiping him because I know who he is, y'all. He's my savior. He's my Lord. And he has revealed himself unto me. I have received of the Lord a revelation 
of who he is. And every one of us can have an encounter. He don't do the same thing, right? He treat, we're not cookie cutter people. He deals with us as individuals, as unique as he made us. He come to us like he wants to and revealed himself. Somebody needs an encounter with the Lord, not just an invite to church. Mm -hmm. I'll repeat that. Somebody need an encounter with the Lord, not just an invite to church. Here we are. Um, I'm going to move on. I kind of covered that part too. I'm speaking as the Lord lead me. We're going to go to section three now. Jesus came looking for us. Jesus came to build his church. A church is a gathering place. That's what we see it as. This is a building, a gathering place for like-minded people that want to serve the Lord. Amen? A church is also a hospital, as we also say. Sick people come. People that's down and out, down in spirits. The church have all kinds. It's a net. And it brings in many kinds of fish. But no one should leave the same way they came if they will allow Jesus to get into their individual boats. Amen? So, however, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. Each one of us are wonderfully made and are part of the church. Amen? So when we are talking about the church, we're not just talking about the building. We have to maintain this temple of God. We house the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God. We are the temple of God. And how we treat the temple of God needs to be taken seriously. Where we carry the temple of God, how we handle the temple of God, what we incorporate with or in the temple of God, where we take it to and what we put it in the midst of. We need to be mindful of the temple of God. Amen? We represent God. This is his house. So, and it says here, um, oh, that Greek word ecclesia. Shout out to Pastor Maddox. He, this is his name of his church. <laughs> hey Amen. That's all right. That's all right. He, that, you know, people choose church names for many different reasons. We know the reason why Pastor Howard, our founder church, chose the name or God gave her the name Revelation. Because in this church, the gifts and the callings were, are operating. And we'll continue operating. We were known for the gifts and the callings in this church. We have seen miracles, signs, and wonders in this place. And when God had her to put, give the church name, it wasn't because she just picked a book out the Bible, Revelation. No, this, the name of this church is because of the power of God. It was given because of the gifts, the callings. The revelation, what God revealed. And I'm going to give you an example. God revealed things to her. And when I was real little, I didn't think she was God, y'all. <laughs> That's because I didn't know Jesus right then. But she would be in one town and God revealed to her what was going on in another. She was able to give specifics. Because she was a prophet and she was a seer. Back in the Old Testament, they called prophets seers. But guess what? They got to have the eye of God. And as John did in the book of Revelation, he spoke what God revealed. All right? And then when you have the fivefold ministries operating like they, they, they can and, and continue, we know what's in these walls here. So the name of our church was for a reason. So we are the church. You take the, Sister Weems used to sing, take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. Why? Because we're the church. Amen. So if the building burns down the church, yes, stand. God forbid, but we are the church. So I, I saw that word in the lesson. It's Greek word. To call, it, it, it literally means to call out of. And we are the ecclesia of God because we are called out of darkness into this marvelous light. 
fall out of sin. So, and the Ecclesia is going to be called out again because we're going to be called up to meet the Lord in the air at the rapture. Amen? Amen. Moving along, B, uh, his church is built upon the revelation of who he is. That's what I love. Ah, many people, uh, they love the Lord. They, they serve. They, they, they do what they, like Evangelist Clark was saying, what they had in their own ability to do. Like Peter, he was a fisherman. He was fishing. He knew what he was doing. He knew when the fish would bite. He was skillful. There are people with faith. There are people that operate and do what they do because they love the Lord, but yet not have received the revelation of who he is. See, that's another level to receive the revelation of who he is. And God, that's when you, you don't just get it. You can't teach a revelation. Let me put that plug in there. You can't teach a revelation. You can talk about it. You can testify of your encounters, but a revelation comes with an experience. You can't teach a revelation. You can just share it, talk about it, but then you got to have your own encounter your own experience to really know who Jesus is. And the church is built on the revelation. I'm talking about the church of God, not just somebody that got a building and got a name and got in running with, uh, with a, a, a Bible. The church that Jesus spoke of to Peter was built on who he is. Now, where did that come from? He, he was asking his disciples, those close to him, who do you say I am? You know, y'all walking with me, talking with me. Sometimes I want to know what's in your heart. What, what you think? What, ha, ha. Let me do a survey. Let me do, I want some of your feedback. Who do you say I am? What is our relationship to you? What do you call me? Who do you call him? Wonderful counselor. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Why do they sing that? Because he must have counseled them. You understand what I'm saying? What is he to you? I know what he is to me. I have breakfast with Jesus. Plug in. Shout out for Sister Evangelist Zena Owens for her book, Breakfast with Jesus. He's my breakfast buddy. He's not on my level, but I enjoy having breakfast with him. What do you say? Who, what, what do you call him? Who do you say I am? Well, they were saying, some say, i am ask you what some say. Who do you say? Hey, okay, tell me what are they saying about me? It's good to know. You know, it's good to know how you viewed in the community. It matters. Well, I don't care about what nobody thinks. You need to care. You represent, we are ambassadors of Christ. You do need to care. Take a survey. Bishop Ways is saying, uh, stop, turn around, look and see how you've been living in the world. Why? Check yourself. How are you viewed? Because you know what you feel you should do, what you know do, maybe. But how are you viewed? Yes, uh, Brother Troy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, he sure did. Self check, self checks. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yes, ignore. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hated without a cause. Mm -hmm. Mm 
is continue. And you do what you can, because some things you cannot prevent. And that you let God handle it. Some things, because the scripture said, put a difference between clean and unclean. Okay. Now, if you look at the word clean and look at the word unclean, there's already a difference. You in. But when he said put a difference, that means you can't go the extra mile to make sure it's clear. Just in case somebody can't read. <laughs> but my point, what I'm saying is, put a difference between clean and unclean. I need it clear that I'm not that. I need it clear that I'm not a part of that. I'm in the world, not of the world. I need it clear that I'm not doing that. I don't need to give a false impression. I don't need to trip you up. I don't need to give you a reason to make a mistake and lie on me. Now, if you lie on me, you just lie on me. But I don't need you, I don't need to give you that reason. There are things we can do by, it's called walking circumspectly, amen? And it's also rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show yourself a proof. You, you know, one way to make sure you don't um, cause anybody to trip, be not, you know, just be careful not to say the Bible says. Remember, Lady Pete taught us that lesson. That's not what the Bible said. That was a song. <laughs> we, we make mistakes because things are passed down as if it was Bible. You know, calling certain things sin, that's not sin. It was just the preference of the leader at that time. So we stay open to learn, but we must all continue to walk circumspectly in and out among God's people because we represent. Amen? Amen. We represent God. So here, um, I'm moving right along. Um, Jesus, I'm here in the on page 85 in the second chapter. Um, it says here, Jesus, the, as Jesus' disciples, we are called to continue Jesus' ministry and extend it to the ends of the earth. See, Jesus started it, but he left a commission for us to continue it. The greater works mean we can go farther. Jesus being in the flesh at the time can, was only able to do so much. He wasn't able to be in every place. He had to steal away. He had to come here, go there. But now we have the media. We can be showing this in another country, another state. While we're here in California, it can be viewed in another state. This is a part of the greater work, amen? So it should continue, amen. In the uh, letter C on page 85, we are his church. It is not the building. I believe we covered that. Instead of being the church, uh, uh, let me read this part. We live in a world where instead of being the church, believers attend church. I just wanted to just say a little something on that. Like I said earlier, somebody need an encounter with God and not just a church invitation. We got too many people just attending. Hey, party over here. I told somebody, don't make this a club. This is the house of God. No, it's saving over here. You can actually get you something to help you live right next week when the door, when we are not present in the building. See, because the church is not just about a building. You take him with you. So when you get a real encounter with God, you will remember what you said to God when you were in his presence. You will remember what he said to you because it's two ways. He talks, you talk. He listens, you listen. When he speaks, do you recognize his voice? When God speaks, when he was, when Jesus was walking by, he just said, follow me. Now, Matthew was a tax collector. He had money right, right there on the, board, and on the spot. Good, good position in the community. Jesus walked by, follow me. Wrap it up and go. It's something about the word out of his mouth. 
whatever comes out of the mouth of Jesus is powerful. It will make you do something. Mama used to say, it would, Evangelist Edward used to say, it would either, either drive, it drive you or draw you. It can bless you if you allow it because it gives life. Who would stop everything to follow him at his word? As Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word. That's when the blessing comes, when we get, use that nevertheless and obey God. We get personal testimonies. As I share with you, that's not my only encounter. That's one that just came to my mind. But we treasure encounters with the Lord, not just a moment but when he can walk with you and talk with you and tell you that you're his own, that's to be treasured. But we today are to be just as Peter was fishers of men. He said, when he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, thou art the Christ, the son of God. Woo, you said it. You don't even know what you're saying, Peter. Let me tell you, you know what you're saying. Because my father, God, revealed it to me. And since he chose to reveal it to you, oh, my God, God chooses to, he gives you revelation to who he will. Since my father chose to give it to you. Because you didn't say that of flesh and blood. You didn't answer that question with flesh and blood. You answered it on the spirit of God, my father. That came from my father, which is in heaven. Since you answered like that, I'm going to give you the keys. And Peter used the keys on the day of Pentecost. That was one of the best fishing trips he had with, without being in the water. <laughs> on the day of Pentecost in chapter Acts, I'm sorry, the book of Acts chapter two, Peter used his keys. And he used a different kind of net. He was now a fisher of men. They were gathered together there during the Jubilee, the uh, Feast of, the, uh, it was a gathering on the day of Pentecost, I mean 50. So there was a celebration in Jerusalem, weeks of, of feast, you know. And every, all the Jews from under every nation were gathered there in Jerusalem. God was strategic, strategic with those fish. Like I said, he commanded the fish to be there. He knew they were gonna be gathered there for that time, because it's a very special time. And so they were all there and they listed. If you go to the, uh, the second chapter Acts, you will see all that were listed there. And when the Holy Ghost came in the upper room and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the spirit of God gave utterance, they all heard them in their own language. And it was so many that were there, so many fish. And when they heard them, they said, what does this mean? They're Galileans, but they're speaking in our own tongues. And they begin to name who was present. I didn't hear of an interpreter. How is it that? Peter stood up with the 11 and said, gave them a message and preached Jesus and him crucified. And how that same Jesus, hallelujah, is, he has given us this Holy Ghost that you see in here. No, we're not drunk, just a night hour. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. If you didn't believe Jesus, hallelujah, you know Joel. Glory to God. So this that you see right here was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it has come to pass. In the last day, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. You know, Joel, hallelujah. You know what he said. This is that. Glory to God. And when they heard this, they said, men, brother, what should we do? He told them, repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But this promise is unto you and to your children, to your children's children, to all that are far off, even as many the Lord our God shall call. We are here today with the Holy Ghost. So it came. It happened. It's for real. I did. Peter used his keys. He let down his net. And he got one of the best drops ever. Amen.
when they went back in the fourth chapter Acts and prayed after they'd been through a little some some, the house shook. They came out with more boldness. Hallelujah. They were filled again. Refillings are all right. Come on and get a refilling. Get filled up until there's no room for doubting. No room for your ways. No room. Just obedience to the word of God so we can let down our nets according, nets, all that we have, according to how God leads us because he knows who's commanded to be caught by our net. That's why he gave the great commission, go ye therefore. And we supposed to still be going and doing. Peter did it. The saints continued. And they continued in the doctrine of the apostles. So we, let's tell the Lord, thank you for the word. And let's use all of our necks. Amen. Amen. Launch out into the deep. Don't be scared. Launch out into the deep. Lady Evan Scott gave me an eye on that. Don't be scared. The one that commanded the fish to be there to be caught also made the water. Come on now. Do you know him? Some people don't know him, but it's always more to learn about him. Let's trust God. Launch out into the deep and use all our nets. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. Did you enjoy that, that beautiful lesson taught by Evangelist Owens? I will build my church. And I and I love it again. This the, the lesson, how they turn around. They take they, we we have heard this before, this lesson before, but I love it how they actually take it and they break it down even more so. So you even get an even better clear a clear understanding for us uh, for us about uh, for about uh, this particular passage and for and we've seen the for us how uh oh several different several different uh, uh for us saying different things that evangelists were saying and for us how put how, how they you know the lord told him to launch out into the deep glory to god and we see for us how he was able to break it down even more so and then turn around how he revealed himself to peter and turn around peter glory to god because you know he he was the one that what he asked and and that's and then also because here he is he's walking with them and he was concerned about do you know who i am He's walking with them. He's with them. You know, it's like, okay, you know, okay, what, okay, you said that they say I'm a prophet, I'm this, that, but what do you think, <laughs> Lord? So I love that. He wanted there, he wanted to find out what they think. They are with him every day. Glory to God. Who We come to church every single Sunday or every, every who do you think that I am? Glory to God. So he's, he put it, you know, it's not just the ones who are for us who are out there, but the ones who are walking with him. I love it. Glory to God. Beautiful lesson, Evangelist. Beautiful lesson. Again, we thank God for each and everyone that's here, the ones that are on the different medias, the ones that's going to come on later. Again, we thank God for, for this lesson. I will build my church. Glory to God. There's nothing else. We're getting ready to stand and be dismissed. Again, we thank God for allowing us to come together. Thank God for the opportunity he gives us every time that we're able to come together. Let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Beautiful.